partners with Marie. They are recently engaged. Congratulations. Woo! Brandon. Uh, I'm Marie's fiance now. Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Liv asked me to talk about spouse support. Um, I know that when we get into Beachbody or when the person that we're with gets into Beachbody, um, for a lot of us it's very different. Um, it, it's a different uh, type of job, it's a different type of work. It's not the safe path that our parents thought we were going to take maybe. And uh, I know sometimes our family members, our partners, maybe aren't that supportive initially. And um, I know that everyone's situation can be a little bit different, so I'm just going to kind of tell our story and talk about some pivotal moments for me and uh, us through our almost five-year journey with Beachbody now. Um, so when we started out, Marie was teaching. I was working at a mine um, a couple, well, miles from Saskatoon and uh, and it was okay things were okay and uh, you know we had a fine relationship and we had a you know good families and everything was fine um, but Marie wasn't happy uh, with her work I wanted to find some different work I wasn't really happy with what I was doing and um, and Marie was just finishing, it's funny, Matt, he was talking about, you know, going to school and investing in your future, and then you get out, you get the job, the dream job that you thought was going to be the thing that made you happy, and it doesn't. And, you know, you've sunk so much time, and some people stay so much money into these things, and, and it's like, how can I look for something else? I just spend 40, 50 grand, I may still be paying this off, and I want to do something else. And... Uh, you know, that was kind of where we were at, where Marie was just finishing her teaching degree, just got a job offer, and she was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a teacher anymore. I, if I do this, I will be depressed. And I saw that, and I felt that, and she would come home and, you know, sometimes be in tears, and I, you know, to watch her partner go through that, it was hard. And, uh, <laughs> I think I was gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I remember we looked at some different things and uh, you know there was a franchise opportunity that came up and we looked at it and we're like maybe this is what you should do, what we should do and invest in and you know we looked at the final numbers and it was like no this is, this is not the thing, we passed on that. And, uh, and I don't know, I don't even really remember exactly but Marie got this, whatever, saw this post, she's like I'm going to do this group and she was working out and stuff and I was like okay and then it was like it was out right after she finished her, she wasn't even first, she wasn't finished that first group, and she's like, I think I'm gonna like be a coach. And I was like, okay, like I totally support you, like looking for something like, like run with it. And um, I, didn't, I didn't even know what that meant, I was just like, great, <laughs> <laughs> like, great. Uh, you know, I was like, sweet, I totally support you, and, uh, you can work it out, like, I, th I thought that was great. And I was like, she found something, and uh, you know, started in with it, and she was working from her phone, and, Working, you know, in between hours that time, she was like I said, she was teaching and she was also serving. And I was working at the mine like 12, 14 hour days, um, you know, for two weeks on at a time, and we didn't see a lot of each other. And, um, you know, initially I, I, I felt like I was that supportive spouse or partner or whatever, and I was really encouraged her. And she, you know, took off and she was seeing the success and she was changing her body and she was happy. Um, but there are aspects of that that came up and it was. They were tough for us. Uh, you know, Marie was, because she had this limited amount of time, she was on her phone a lot and on her computer a lot. And for all you guys out here that are coaches, you know how that, what that looks like, right? You're on your phone, you work on your phone, it's, it's always with you. And, uh, and it became, it, it kind of conflicted with our, our life, right? Like I said, we didn't have a lot of time to spend together. And, um, so I'd, I'd be like, Marie, like, why are you on your phone? And it's, that was kind of a conflict for us. And I would ask her, like, you know, like, what are you doing? Because it's so, you know, with tangible jobs where you go to work and you put in the hours and you can say, hey, uh, this is what I did at work. This is what I built. This is what I did. It's very easy to show that when you're like, oh, I went on my phone and I had to message people or I was doing research or I was watching a coach training. It can look from the outside like you're not doing anything. And initially when you're not used to that, 
it was hard for me to watch it. And especially, you know, there was a little bit of imbalance, but there was also uh, on both of our parts where Marie was trying to figure this out. She's essentially launching a business. Like you guys are launching businesses and it's easy to take that lightly because the investment is so small, but it is a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. And you know, if, if your partner came to you and said, hey, I'm gonna build this type of business, you'd be like, okay, I know this is gonna take a ton of your time and you know, you're probably gonna need my support. But when she, you know, I didn't understand that because she's working from her phone. I don't see exactly what she's doing. I don't even know really know what coaching is. <laughs> and, and you know, I was, I wanted her to spend that time with me when she needed to be on her phone, on her phone or working. And that was something that we had to talk about and communicate about. And you know, sometimes we had heated arguments about that. And we worked through that. And that was something that would only come up, you know, a few times. And it took me working through some things. And like I said, it, it took her communicating her dreams and her aspirations and her vision for what she saw that this could be. And uh, you know, it took me looking long-term and saying, oh, this is a short-term sacrifice for the long-term gain of me being happy, of me being happy, of us, you know, having this life that we don't have to go to jobs that, you know, don't, don't fill us up, don't fulfill us. And, um, and that's where it started. So, so Marie, like I said, she, she started running with this and like I said, it brought up some things for us and uh, it helped us grow. And I think communicating was something that helped us get through some of those times and some of those hiccups. Um, and then, so that, so that was kind of the first year and stuff like that. I'll take it. There was another couple of moments. Um, I remember dropping her. It wasn't Bree's first Super Saturday. She actually drove down to Regina for one. But I remember dropping her off on Super, Super Saturday, and I didn't really have any interest in coming. Like I said, I didn't know what coaching was. I wasn't doing the workouts yet. And I just dropped her off and I didn't think anything of it. You know, I, you know, like I said, I wanted to be that supportive spouse, and I encouraged her, but I wasn't in it. I wasn't interested in it. I sure wasn't going to be speaking at it. <laughs> and uh, and these things happen gradually, you know. Like I said, like where I was at, where we were at, we we're not the people we are today. And um, I remember this is kind of a, this was definitely a pivotal moment. We, I went to Sunum with Marie, and I was excited about it because, like I said, I was working in the mine, and I had actually switched over, and I was getting into real estate. So I was excited about learning about social media. I was excited about learning about marketing, and. Um, you know, we had met some new friends, so we were excited. We went to Nashville, and I remember sitting in uh, sitting in the stands in one of the halls, one of these huge halls, and listening to the speaker. And you know, I was there mostly for support. Like I said, I was I went to all the trainings. Lots of them didn't apply, but I but I showed up. And uh, the speaker, she said, "I want you to imagine what your life would be like without Beachbody." And I remember like thinking back and Marie started crying because she couldn't she couldn't even answer it. And I and I didn't even really think about that. I didn't even think about what my life was like before Beach Body and what my life had what that had done for her life. And I thought back to, you know, us working in jobs that we didn't like, you know, our our physical bodies, our mental, you know, our mental states, like we started reading P D, um, you know, we started working on we started eating right, you know, like basically like quit drinking like all of these terrible habits and all these things that we used to do and it was like I wouldn't say our life was going down but it was flatline for a little bit and it was like each body like it, that was the pivotal moment when it just like started climbing mm -hmm. and like I said it was gradual and it didn't happen overnight um, but like I said I, I couldn't imagine my life without each body and um, is anybody else crying? <laughs> Is it just me? Okay. Okay, and then fast forward, so about a year ago, um, we went to another live event. And uh, I think it was in Winnipeg, and Carl Dykler was speaking. And, you know, in this business, if you're the one working it, or if you're just the spouse who's there to listen to the ups and downs, or if you're another in another type of entrepreneurial field, there's cycles and there's ups and downs and it can be hard. And you know, man, Thomas talked about finances and that's a big part of it, right? You worry about your finances, you worry about your security, your safety, paying the bills. And that's always a thought in the back of your mind. And I remember being at this Super Saturday and Carl Deckler said, 
take quitting off the table. And it was like, just like this weight lifted off my shoulder. And I was like, oh my God, like, if you just show up and come to these events and show up better than you were the year before, like, you're only going up, you know, and you, you just don't quit. That's it, just don't quit. Because you're not going to fail. I mean, you know, you're not going to stop. Why stop being a beach body coach? You know, you're going to be in the best shape of your life. You get to hang out with all these great people. You know, there's nothing bad about it. It doesn't, it fairly costs anything. So just don't quit. Just don't quit. And, um, and that's kind of, I want to bring it to the last uh, thing I want to say here is just, you're doing this for you. You know, you have to do this for you. Um, you know, you either you got into this to get in better shape, you got into this to make some more money, and um, there's gonna be lots of people around you who don't get it, who don't support you, and um, you're gonna have to be okay with that. And uh, the thing is, if you just don't quit, there's some people who don't get it, who don't understand, who might be your parents, who might be your spouse, who don't get it. If you stick with it long enough, they're gonna be the ones that are in your challenge groups. They're gonna be the, the ones that are asking you, how did you do it? And that's it. You just don't quit. And you do it for yourself.